Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk about life, food, family, and fun. And today, I am so, so excited. I cannot even tell you. I'm gonna be showing you how to make an orange Danish roll keto fry. Wanna know how to make it? Stay tuned and let's do this. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I didn't really grow up having cinnamon rolls on special occasions or Saturday mornings. I grew up having orange Danish rolls. You know this kind right here where you get them in the store, they're in the can and they've got that. It's like, kind of like a cinnamon roll, but it's got orange frosting and oh my gosh, I lived for Saturday mornings with that. But now that I'm doing a keto diet, I can't make those. I can't have those. <laughs> so sad. So. I was gonna take that recipe and ketofy it. So I got this inspiration from Low Carb Yum. She does a keto cinnamon roll, and I've made that, and it's amazing. And so I thought, I wonder if I can make kind of something similar, but make it into an orange Danish roll. So this is what I did. I followed her recipe, and I will link her recipe below um, to her website, but I followed it kind of. I did a few different things to it, and I'm gonna show you what I have changed and made it into an orange roll. I also do use a quarter cup of fresh squeezed orange juice. Now, that does not add an enormous amount of carbs when you put that throughout 12 different rolls, which is what this recipe will make. But if you don't wanna do that, you can absolutely use orange extract and water instead of the orange juice. But for me, I just feel like it's so worth it to have that fresh juice in there, but you don't have to. So don't get all over me that there's orange juice in this if you don't want to use it you don't have to okay so what you're gonna do is do that normal sort of fat head kind of dough but I add and I almost forgot to do this I had added it at the last second I add a package of yeast to the dough and it's not going to change the rise on it or any of that but it does add flavor and the smell of yeast when it's coming out of the oven and I think it just makes a difference so it's just the instant package of dry yeast and you just add in the whole packet and you'll add it into your dry ingredients at the beginning, not when I added in, I just forgot and added it in at the last second. So you're going to take your cream cheese and your mozzarella cheese and you're gonna microwave that. Now also, people talk about weighing your ingredients versus just using a cup, measuring cup, and I am so lazy and I don't like to do that. But when I first made these, I did weigh them and then the second time that I did it, I did not weigh them I just did the cup measurements and it does make a difference it's not huge but the second ones tasted more like cheese than they did an actual dough and so I would highly recommend that you weigh it so anyway you're gonna microwave this stuff until it's fully incorporated and melted and then you're going to add to that your eggs your melted butter your dry ingredients, which is the coconut flour, your baking powder. I do also add um, a teaspoon of salt to give it a little bit of extra kick. And then also to that dry ingredients, I am going to put in the zest of an orange. Now I had a huge orange, so I did about a teaspoon of orange zest in the actual dough and then I used the rest of it which is about a half a teaspoon of orange zest into the frosting. So once all of those are incorporated together, you're gonna add in the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients and mix it all in, then you're gonna wanna just get your hands dirty with this because you really want it to be fully incorporated. I've seen people on videos do it where they're just mixing it with a spatula. I can never get my dough to be really, really mixed in well without just getting my hands in there and getting my hands dirty. So get it in there, knead it with your hands, pull it, fold it over, push your thumbs in the middle of it, really get it worked in until it is a consistent dough throughout. Then what you're gonna do is roll it out. You're gonna put it between two pieces of parchment paper. Saran wrap also does work. It's not as good, but it does work if you don't have parchment paper. And you're gonna roll that out to a nine by 12 rectangle. Once you've got that completely rolled out, then what you're going to do is take softened butter, three tablespoons of softened butter, maybe four, and you're gonna spread that all over your dough. 
Then you're going to take your cinnamon sugar mixture. Now the recipe originally for the cinnamon rolls called for this erythritol based brown sugar. I actually don't like it because it has that cooling effect that erythritol has and it's not my favorite thing. So I use the monk fruit golden version. I'll have that linked below in the description box in case you wanna get that. I just buy it off of Amazon. I love that. Uh, it doesn't have that weird aftertaste, plus it's natural and I just like monk fruit so much better. So you're gonna take your monk fruit and your cinnamon, you're gonna mix it together, you're going to spread that all over the dough. It does look like a lot, but it's really not. It's It comes out perfectly. Use the amount that is in the description box below. So once you have that spread out, you're going to to roll it up into a log and then cut it into 12 equal pieces. Then you're gonna take a pan. Now, depending on how high you want them to rise, you can use a eight by eight pan, but I think that's a little bit too small. I had like an eight by 10 pan that I used. You can use a nine by 12, but they won't be quite as tall. So just get one where there's space in between them because they are going to puff up and get bigger, but not a ton of space to where they just kind of stay a little bit flat. You're gonna bake these at 400, and every oven does vary. It really depends. You might even have to turn the pan halfway through the cooking. So set your timer for 12 minutes. It's 12 to 16 minutes, and just kind of watch them until it's golden brown on the top and they look finished. Then pull them out and let them sit for just a couple of minutes. And in the meantime, while they are cooling, you can make your frosting. And this is where I use a little bit of cream cheese, a little bit of the monk fruit sweetener that I powdered. So just throw it into a blender and powder it up. Your orange juice or your orange extract, your orange zest, and your butter. Mix that all together into your cream cheese orange frosting. Frost those puppies up and enjoy. They are best served warm, but they stay in the fridge really well for several days and all you have to do is pop them in the microwave for 15 or 20 seconds and it's amazing. They are so, so good. Breakfast is back, people. Keto-fied orange rolls. Yum. Speaking of oranges, if you haven't tried my orange chicken recipe, I literally took the original Panda Express orange chicken sauce and keto-fied it. Ugh, so good. I'll have that in the description box below as well. So I hope you'll give these a shot. I think they're really good, like really good. I'm gonna make them often. And otherwise, I hope you're having a great day. Stay inspired, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.